Welcome to Schmuckcast, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lenny Sherman, your one and only host. Welcome to the old carnival. How's everyone doing, huh? I am fantastic. Strippers. We've, we've got a lot in store for you tonight. We do? Big podcast plans. We well, yeah, man. Of, we have a lot of, a lot of stuff. database. <laughs> so, so the first kick, thing... off. Yeah, the first thing I want to discuss, we were gonna, we made a promise to go see the new Godzilla film. We were gonna continue our last podcast <sighs> with talking about Godzilla. So, what did you think? I give it on a Linsky meter a six. What do you think? One to ten. One to sixty-nine. <laughs> I give it a twenty-three. Twenty-three point oh, okay. five. Yeah, well, it was a good old time at the movies. I suppose it took an hour and a half to get there. <laughs> you know, I, and it's, it's no, an hour I, and forty minute movie. I, I dug it. You know, it wasn't bad. It, you know, I, I don't. You know, I don't want to give the impression that this is a good movie. I wouldn't classify it as a good movie. And I'm, I didn't see any of the prior Godzilla films prior to seeing this Godzilla. I'm not counting the Roland Emmerich one. Yeah, you you went and seen the the few the the so after ones. I, right after I saw the recent Godzilla, I went back and saw the the uh, Japanese. Uh, Godzilla made by Toho, which is the official Godzilla, and uh, it made me um, appreciate the franchise that much more, and it made me realize what the new Godzilla did wrong, despite what all of the yeah. reviews are saying. Not enough Godzilla? Um, I don't think the problem was that it didn't have enough Godzilla. I think the problem, hands down, was that we didn't have any interesting characters. Yeah, well, yeah. And... Look, I'm I'm looking at just the original 1954 Godzilla. So far, I've seen the first three in the original series. So that was Godzilla. And you're gonna keep going? Yeah, I'll see them all. I'd like going? to because I'm really enjoying them. them. Oh, wow. They're hokey entertainment. You know, it's. Um, I'm sure we, there'll be some that you're happy to skip, but well, you know, yeah, you won't know until you see it. I guess. But um, I saw the first black and white one, and and that one had about the same amount of Godzilla. Yeah. But the characters were interesting. I can actually tell you what the characters' motivations were and what really made that film interesting. The number one thing I really hate about this Godzilla movie, and I think maybe some people agree, but, you know, that Brian Cranston got it in Breaking Bad or whatever. Right. He was in the trailer heavily, and he thought he was going to be a great character. And, you know, honestly, the first 20 minutes of Godzilla I really liked. His his wife dies in front of him. Things like that. It's going to be about this guy. And then they kill him half hour into it, and it goes to his his boring-ass fuck son. That was probably, the, yeah, he was probably the worst one to me. He had, you know, just, he was just flat. His whole character was flat. Because you talk about the characters, the human element. That's just, what I, I mean, that's, that's what just, I heard a lot of The whole movie, he just sat there, just wooden faced the whole time. It's just not a very inspiring performance. And it did, it left no impression. You, you know, I would much rather them followed it with the brand, uh, the, the, his dad's character. I thought that character was much more fascinating. It would have made a better fit to the movie. But yeah, know. a lot of the reviews were saying that they liked the, the Cranston character a lot. Um, I even you know even if he died you know yeah. you know if he died I mean you know that's fine that he died as early as he did but that was a thing the other characters weren't that interesting I I watched uh, King Kong versus Godzilla recently right, right. and it was a really hokey movie it's probably the worst God's or uh, the worst uh, King Kong costume I've ever seen but it was an entertaining movie and there's a lot of humor in the cast and that this. Godzilla movie, the Amer- the one that just came out, had no humor. It had no personality. A little bit. I like when the little boy points out on the TV, Mom, look, look, dinosaurs. <laughs> it just shows Godzilla. I'm surprised you even remember that. Completely. Like, oh, I love that scene. I just don't remember that I much do like about that it. I do like one shot where it was like, I loved Vegas, They got you know. Godzilla right. Don't get me wrong. Oh, and, yeah. Um, he looked amazing. You know, I, spoiler alert, uh, Godzilla does fight other monsters in this movie. I well, thought yeah, the we, I thought we, the other monsters could have been... <laughs> I thought the other monsters could have been inspire, more inspired. Um, I don't think it was you know. one male and a female, and they were they were fucking and having babies. Something so it was kind of like cute that. in a way how they kind of snuggled together, and then yeah. doesn't the government blow up their babies? And they're like, Arr! and Godzilla comes in and is like, Arr! the other thing that I noticed about this ass. one is it, it it they kind of take on faith that Godzilla is a good guy. Did you notice that? Yeah. Like it never built up that Godzilla might be a villain. Like he should have been the focus of the film. And you you I feel like the monsters he fights in this took priority over Godzilla. It, my favorite shot in the movie might have been the one that starts over the boat and you see Godzilla go under the boat. That, that was pretty badass. sweet. I just love the money I shot. I love the bridge scene, the bridge when all the kids are on the school bus and they see yeah. Godzilla come out I love the, the money shot when they first reveal Godzilla yeah, from and all his, his feet glory. all the way up. But yeah, there's just too many cutaways too. Like It, it was a total cock tease of a movie to me. <laughs> it was. Yeah, as soon as they're about to like, the throw title a blow, of this movie is Godzilla, and enough. they never focus on Godzilla. I mean, it's not that I'm saying they needed more Godzilla, but 
he should have had but Godzilla, some focus. Godzilla always has a strong human element. It seems like in other movies you've seen, it's like that too. I mean, the they humans, have a strong human element. Yeah, this movie did as not. It should I mean, it's hard right. to make a two-hour movie with Godzilla just fighting monsters. Yeah, that's I don't. Fun. That's the thing. I, I don't have think a backdrop to it all. Yeah, but I, this was no backdrop. This was like a uh, yeah, that, preschool play. That was unfortunate. <laughs> like this was almost like the Roland Emmerich movie, just yeah. not as goofy. Well, it was just all a bunch of stock characters, and of course, you had the scene where he sees his girlfriend, of course, and they hug and kiss. It's just all. You know, ties it up in a big bow. Godzilla gets up and's like, "Fuck!" If you're this. a Godzilla fan, I, I'd say, if, and, and you're looking for a new Godzilla movie. I mean, you don't really have any other option aside from the Roland Emmerich one. But uh, well, no, there's lots of Godzilla movies you can watch. You know, well, I'm just saying, if you want a new one that you know yeah. you, you're ready, because the last one, the last official one, came out in like well, 2004. A sequel, so <laughs> can't wait. Yeah, I guess the the guy who directed this, I can't think of his name. He's directing the uh, the first Star Wars spinoff movie, which is supposed to come out December 2016. Yeah, we'll get to that later. I have my doubts. Anyways, the other good thing too I liked was the uh, the lightning comes out of his mouth or whatever. It is. What was it? Yeah, what do they his, call uh, that? Godzilla lore. Um, in the lore, his, his lightning. Uh, no, it's dick. fire breath. What fire breath? Um, solar solar breath or right. something like that. When he that. opens yeah. the jaws up with that monster and just shoots. That, him that was pretty sweet. Everything was with badass. Godzilla was great, but when you only have twenty minutes of Godzilla and the big fight at the end takes place well, in the dark, the fighting to me is a little redundant in Godzilla. It's one thing I notice is always just like oh clashing and then clashing and yeah, there really wasn't a destroyed. whole lot of fighting. It, it does get a little. Yeah. It was more. It was yeah. more cocktease. It was more seeing buildings get demolished, but not actually seeing the battle until the end. And it didn't bother me that the fighting took place at night. There were some really good photography. Photography with this movie, cinematography, um, great credit sequence in the beginning, yeah, yeah and the musical scores. But that's kind of sad if all you remember is the, like the opening well, credits. Well, there's a lot of little things. Musical like. score is pretty good. The same yeah. guy, Alexander Desplat, who did a couple of the Harry Potter what was films. His name? Desplat. Alexander De- Desplat, D E S, yeah, <laughs> Desplat. Anyway, so that that's my review in a nutshell. It wasn't a bad movie. It's probably something I might watch one more time. But I'm having a blast watching the uh, the older ones from the yeah, 50s no, now. I, I bet. Yeah, I'm, I really want to see those. I got the original Blu-ray sitting in my room. I'm gonna watch the watch Japanese version. I would not recommend Looking the American to version. It's, I, oh yeah, I've always kind of been interested in God. Well, I'm not interested. Well, I am, but you know what I mean. Well, when I Never saw them, tickled I, my dick or anything. But I did. I wasn't into them as a kid. Although what's really weird is I was into Power Rangers big time when I was a kid, and they're kind of the same kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, there you go. But my brother Jack used to watch Godzilla movies and they were American English dubbed and they they were so hokey there's one where Godzilla actually talks it's so, so stupid so what does this Godzilla get movie get on a uh, 1 to 10 a 22.5 no no not 1 to 10 1 to 10 uh, uh, 5 yeah there you go <laughs> yeah it has inspiring moments but you know I, I think that like I said the main problem to me is definitely they, they killed off the one character that actually had you just you, you know what I mean you don't have to show Godzilla that much but if the movie's called Godzilla people go to see Godzilla yeah. but you do have to have interesting characters well, that, to carry it that's what I think was the biggest mistake was, was the, they, they introduced this inter- interesting character and then just killed him off yeah but is it really it's you not know. a strength it's not a good thing he could have only have one he interesting character in the he, whole movie he had better emotion than my pinky finger yeah. Well, uh, his son. Yeah, that's why his son. Nobody oh. liked the son. I didn't like the son. But even so, it's really we should have liked. We should have liked the son. You should have tried a little. Yeah. I mean, I was better in Loose Change. What Here the hell, go. dude? It's big. What the hell? I agree. <laughs> so, anyways, I guess we're overall, yeah, kind of disappointed. But it was great to see the Godzilla on the big screen. Obviously, you can always say that. Well, at least we. I'm really. Af- I'm really sad for the future of movies when people give this movie a good review. I'm not saying it's a horrible oh. movie, but it's not a good movie. A lot of people seem to appreciate it. I don't know. A lot of, well, it, Why? Because they finally made Godzilla look like Godzilla? Right. I, no, you're right. I they, think the yeah. fact that they had a Godzilla movie where the monster looks like the Godzilla is why people are praising it because it's, you know, we for many years, all the Americans had was the Roland Emmerich one where they kind of tried to do something different with Godzilla. Yeah, I'd say. But that doesn't mean, mean that this is a good movie. Uh, this is a less goofier, mm-hmm. more serious version Godzilla can look of great, that but, Roland know, Emmerich hey, movie. You can't sprinkle sugar on shit. It's still going to taste like shit. There we go. <laughs> great review <laughs> right there. It might look good, but, you know, I, what I did also appreciate about the film, though, is that you get to see little glimpses, though. When you think you're going to get, like, a big money shot of Godzilla, you'd see it as, like, a hand or something. And that, to me, was really exciting, though, because you're kind of just seeing it as the people saw it. They didn't see Godzilla. They were seeing glimpses of him. Yeah. You know, that, that kind of stuff. I appreciated that kind of stuff. It added to the tension, you know. 
to me. Less I don't is know. more. Sometimes. I'd, I'd prefer I the 1954 you. one. And I'm not even saying that because I appreciate older movies or anything like that. I'm genuinely saying I enjoy the 1954 one much better because it of the character too, development it? and because... Now, don't get me wrong. The one thing that this movie, the new one, did right was the atmosphere. There are some great atmospheric scenes, but at the same kind time, of. you don't care. I thought it was great <laughs> when they started parachuting in at the end. That was my favorite shot yeah, of the no, whole movie. Yeah, that was badass. Um, to that music but, from 2001. <laughs> right. Yeah. And uh, I like the bridge sequence. I think it was when they were on the bridge and they had to lay down because the monster was going like right over them. That stuff was pretty intense. Yeah. But, you know, fuck this movie. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to make a sequel. That'd be kind of cool. Anyways. Um, we just we, got? we just uh, saw a couple new movies Call tonight. Movies, THX. So you know, I'll go first. Again, man. But yeah, anyways. I'll go, f- I'll go first because I introduced you to THX. What did you think? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was a, it was a little hard to follow. But I, it was, it it was, is, like, he was feeling emotions that I don't think were allowed, and then he, he banged his wife. Obviously, that didn't settle. His and then, no, I like when he finds out or whatever, they fuck again anyway. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fucking again. Well, it's this is what I would describe as a non-narrative film. No, it is. It is there's, no. Well, it, it does, but it's it's all, there's a lot. Of, it's very suggestive. Yeah, it was hard to follow for me yeah. a little bit. And, and the first time I saw this, as much as I like George Lucas, the, him directing it is what made me want to see it, and I, I didn't understand it. I didn't great really like film. it the first time I or saw like it. All the big white landscapes. Yeah, this is a great. And... You can tell that this was like a, a precursor to Star Wars. Like it has a, a lot of that yeah. very contrasty black and white harsh imagery. Um, you can you you can even see like the sure. beginning of like the stormtroopers and all that. Well, yeah, you see a lot of Star Wars. I do like the visual style a lot. You know, and yeah. I was, the last twenty minutes, I thought kicked ass. Especially considering this movie those, came out. Those car in, races were amazing. Seventy one. I mean, yeah, that for one million. You said under a million. That's I amazing think. to think of all that. I yeah, mean, they gave him like three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Well, so that looks to... better than a fucking PS four game. I mean, that's like fifty years well, of technology. Any movie should look better than a PS four game. True. But no, I mean, it, it it is a very visually stunning film, and that's why I appreciate Lucas. Is he's not, you know, he he's not like he's just a different breed of filmmaker than like. Steven Spielberg or J.J. Abrams or any of those guys, he he knows how to use a camera. He knows how to make a movie. He just tells them yeah. very visually. And I thought THX so does that very well. As you always said. It is. Yeah. Um, and I picked up a lot more on the plot, too, with this time. And I just appreciated it a lot more. Do, yeah. That's yeah. how 2001 works. I'm not getting... Was it one All time, right, Matt. I'll see... It? I know. No, I've seen it like three times. Oh, jeez. Well, Still not a, liking it. <laughs> just like you said in your video. Oh, this is another lost cause. <laughs> just yeah. not like liking that, it. Friends, that was the Wii video. I got a Wii. I got a Wii. Anyways. Yeah. Cool I'm jets. surprised you remembered that. But, so uh, the other one we watched was Bonnie, Bonnie and Clyde. Clyde now, 60s. that one I kind of figured I would like. And I, I thought it was. Well, yeah, it was I've always cool. wanted to see that. And I might have seen it as a kid. My mom used to tell me about it's Bonnie going and Clyde. right away. You know, she finds him trying to steal a car. And right away, you don't rob banks. And. She gets turned on. You know, she, she's they made a life. lot of dumb mistakes in that well, movie, though. This was, she was bored with her life. It kind of suggests that she's in a boring life, and that, that stuff was exciting to her. You almost kind of sympathize with her character. She was yeah. she found excitement in that. It turned her on. And I think a lot of women would admit, I mean, that's that's very uh, alluring to a woman. Yeah. You know, it's sad to see him die, because in the end, you almost do kind of root for him, because they seem like a fun bunch, you know. A lot of great scenes. I'm sure you remember Gene Wilder. <laughs> and that was funny. That's it's kind my of, car! <laughs> kind of pointless, but it was funny. <laughs> I and the ending was like a real like kick in the teeth huh? too. The What's ending that? was a kick in the oh, teeth. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the, that that is a very famous scene now because of just the yeah. brutality of the scene. I mean, you watch any other movies. I know the they. And I know 50s, they killed. Nobody cops. Nobody was doing that. Kind yeah, of movie. I know they killed cops, but that was still pretty but fucked yeah, up. Yeah, natural born killers and like any movie you can think of. I mean, that one was a true landmark of just like. You know, I don't I know liked, how to say, but like I like the, the cinematography. Movies. Yeah, I like oh, the, that too. And the performances, yeah. both of them were an ideal couple. And you know, yeah, it just was fun. I like when he tries to rob the bank and there ain't no money. Here. Yeah, <laughs> he just shoots the window. Fuck this! <laughs> I got a dollar eight, and you're laughing. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, lots of like. Well, yeah. I like too. I don't know how true it is to the real life characters, but I liked uh-huh. how they tried to make the characters likable, even though they right. were doing horrible things. Um, that's always a, right. a that's tough balancing act. I yeah. like the poem she writes for him. You know, he's like, "You just did that was a real poem. Life. That's a poem she actually wrote." Yeah, yeah. And so. I do like the segue. It went from the newspaper to him reading it to the newspaper, and it was like, "Yeah, that's when they finally fuck." Because to you know, it's true. <laughs> you though. keep bringing that up. Though. Like, it's I think like, they fuck now. I think it's symbolic because his thrill was Banks, and like you know, that's that's and what she he got kind turned of, on by. She sent that in and kind of put him on that she plateau made it into real life, and yeah. that, that's what turned him on. 
and then he had sex with her. That's yeah, it's a very well argue. paced and very well directed. Yeah, I like movie. the look of it too. It's very gritty. I don't know if I really like Gene Hackman in the movie. Uh, I thought oh, he was kind of dry. Know. I'm not a big Gene Hackman fan. When you're marrying the girl. <laughs> That's part was actually my favorite scene might be well the Gene Wilder part and also when the sheriff comes up behind him and he tries to get him and they take pictures with him and shit. That was, uh, that was pretty fucked <laughs> like, up. What are we gonna do with him? You know, yeah. so eerie. And this shit really happened. You know, but what oh, a brutal yeah. ending, huh? Yeah, the ending was still. I kind of knew what the ending was. But um, you didn't know it was gonna be that bloody, did you? I mean, it was well, I heard point. it was pretty controversial, so I was. Yeah. Ex- it was actually not as bloody as I was expecting. I still it to love be. that last look they give each other. The way they filmed that was like perfect. Yeah, they, they, no, it was a it was a fun movie. I yeah. liked it. Oh, I'm glad you did. I give it like an, I like you know, eight out of ten, seven yeah, yeah. out of ten. Yeah. I mean, you know, for, for yeah, for. But I told you that was the guy from Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. <laughs> I told you he was one fucking the cheerleader. That's him. I knew it. That's the guy that looks like Elmer Fudd. The raccoon. I told you. Self in a movie, yeah. CW Moss, yeah. <laughs> I do like when he takes money from his own work, <laughs> you know. Yeah, he's like, Yeah, here you go. Oh, you're yeah. gonna work out just fine. <laughs> and the other one, well, the last one, really, I can think of was you know, the bank taking the guy's house and they shoot the sign. I always thought that was a nice little touch, yeah, you know, because that should happen, man. And it must feel good to fucking blow a hole in the fucking sign. Here you go, Wilson, have buddy. a shot, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, I'm glad you liked it, man. It's one of my favorites, yeah, it was cool. Very, very cool for its time. Uh, so what else we got? How about the rating system? Huh? What do you think? What, what now, what you were telling rating? me about this earlier today, what... Uh, I was interested. I went, they were talking about Expendables. You've seen all three films or the first two? The first one I saw. Is yeah. that R? Yeah, I think so. Or was it PG-13? R, well, I are just talking about the fine line of, like, does an action movie have to be R? You know, and I don't know if it has to be. But, you know, it can help. But. Well, this goes back to the conversation of, like, the Die Hard movies. You know, the first three were, were hard R movies in the go. 90s, yeah. and then the the fourth one was PG-13. Um, a lot of that has to do with statistics. Um, it's it's much more marketable and less risky to do a PG-13 Definitely. movie. Um, it's very hard to market an R-rated movie because, first of all, you're you're narrowing your audience. More people can get into a PG-13. And nowadays, I mean, fucking Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire had a scene where they the, the one guy, um, the, the fat guy, cuts off his own hand. I mean, no, obviously you're not going to have a rated R for a Harry yeah, Potter movie. Were dark. Well, yeah, and obviously, or was it a Half Blood Prince? That creepy scene when they go out to get the Horcrux and those little beings in the water. I mean, that shit was out of like a. And that was movie. PG. Yeah, that wasn't even I mean. PG thirteen. Oh, I, Look really? at like Star Wars. That was not PG really. Yeah, Half-Blood it was. Prince? Yep. I thought Half Blood Prince was PG thirteen. PG. No. Nope. Wow. Look it up. See, that's and I mean. then uh, Revenge of the Sith being the only Star Wars movie to get a PG thirteen. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, you're right. Uh, is this an interesting? Didn't it all start with one of your top twenty-five movies? What's that? We're even. Right? Temple of Doom. Yeah. Wasn't it Temple yeah. of Doom that started the whole thing? I want you to tell um, the people about that. Well, t- uh, I don't know if Temple of Doom was the first one to get a PG thirteen. You know, you know what? Gremlins. Um, Gremlins just came out. It was rated PG, but there is there is a fine line. There was oh, yeah. there was a fine line between you know between. A, a PG and an R with that movie because it was a even though it was meant for like a kids movie it was very intense. Oh, it's not a kids movie. No, well. Temple of Doom. No, Gremlins. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Keep going. Stay with me here. I'm trying. Weatherford. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, Gremlin. Up? Gremlins came out and uh, there was a very Steven Spielberg I think brought up to the ratings board like you know this should it's not really an R rating but it's it's stronger than a PG. So Temple of Doom came out and of course you have that infamous scene where the heart gets torn out and. Lucas and Spielberg were like, it's not really strong enough to get an R. So they came up with a PG-13 rating. Good idea. Um, and in the eight, it's really weird now. Like Every movie that comes out now is basically rated PG-13 because that's like a guaranteed Damn. yeah that that's a guaranteed well, a uh, money maker i mean you know i still love yeah but it goes back that. to the marketing that's why like die hard 4 was pg-13 um uh, an interesting story was uh when kevin smith directed cop out there was a debate of whether or not it should be rated pg-13 or r right. and i think it was bruce willis who said uh you're gonna get that on the mic i think it was bruce willis who said you know let's uh we'll 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 do the rated R movie. It'll be hardcore rated R. But um, in order for them to get the rated R, they had to uh, like risk their salaries. Like they weren't getting paid well, up front because that. it was a risk. They had to do that because. Can you eat off mic, please? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anyway, <clears throat> I just thought it was an interesting topic, you know. Uh, and you can get one fucking a PG movie. I thought you could. I could be <laughs> wrong. I mean, because you know, earlier like the the eighties, and I think the 90s even you could get away with one 
fuck, one F-bomb in a PG movie. I could be wrong. I don't know. Yeah, because that's for, like, kids and babies and stuff. I don't know, man. Yeah, but it, it just... I think it's know. PG-13 you're thinking, though, because fuck is a very strong word, so... It is, but I... I, I like I said, I can't... I think it's PG-13 that maybe you're I can't debate F-bomb. it. Now it probably... I don't know. Because swear and, you know... Because think about it. There Ghost aren't... Ghostbusters was PG. That's interesting. Wasn't it? Yeah. It was PG, okay. But there's not a lot of... Like well, adult things in there. Well, there is a lot, but you don't know. Yeah, you're right, though. You wouldn't. A lot of the, a lot of the adult. There's jokes. nothing PG-13 in Ghostbusters. One or is two. There? I don't no. Know. I mean, if Jaws can be PG, I mean, he come didn't on. Have a dick. Well, no, Jaws by all rights would have been R. Maybe. Why would Dick be PG though? I wonder if Jaws would be R. Think of Titanic though. Titanic yeah. had full frontal nudity, and it was PG-13. That's true. You know. And, and but it was taste- swear words. But it was tasteful. Yeah. Right. And share you know. of swear words. That's what, that's what really the question I had is like, how far can you go with the PG thirteen? It really doesn't. What well, is how the many? What, what was the last PG movie you saw though? Everything you know. is basically PG thirteen or R. You know. No, I know. I'm just saying. Like, it just seems like PG thirteen. You can get away with a lot. It should almost be an R, but you can. Well, that's the thing. Know, it's a very fine, fine and, and PG thirteen means teenagers can go see it. You know. Yeah. So it's a very fine line. Um, you could say damn in a PG. I think damn and bitch are the two words that are. Lit. No, you can say shit. You can say ass. I think you can say fuck. I don't know about shit. You can, yeah. You, oh, yeah, you can. Some PG. Look at, PG? Home, look at Home Alone. Horses. I mean, like these days, though. I mean, you can't think of. I don't know. You don't go to Frozen. But that's the thing, though. Like Frozen? <laughs> you fucking cunt. Basically, Whoa! yeah, they don't have G-rated movies anymore. Disney movies are mainly PG for the most part. Well, what I read what's interesting, the new X-Men movie's got a big F-bomb. And you know, parents are taking their eight-year-olds to see that movie. You know, well, so it's an X-Men movie, surprised. though. Yeah, well, I know, but a big that's F-bomb. the that's it's the like, thing. Whoa. Well, Wolverine said said uh, fuck yeah. off in, in uh, <laughs> X-Men first first class. <laughs> right. There's fuck a scene off. where they go to the bar and they approach him to join, and he's like, "Fuck off." And that's PG thirteen. Jaws would be maybe a PG thirteen. I don't know. That, that was before PG thirteen existed, though. Well, I'm just asking a good question. What would it be today? I wonder. There's not a whole lot of swearing. It's just really bloody and gory. I don't know. That might actually be our... That's pretty intense violence. Yeah. Yeah, that's just an interesting... It, could, it was PG. You're right. And I think it was Spielberg that came up with PG-13, wasn't it? Yeah. He was pretty much the maker yeah. of that. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about the MPAA, and there's a whole documentary you can get about... You, you can find about this topic, but... um. The MPAA apparently works for the movie studios. So one movie could be rated PG-13 and another one could get a rated X, which means you can't show it in theaters until you trim it down. Because I know um, I Trey Parker and Matt Stone, when they re- did you ever see Orgasmo? Yeah, well, yeah. So when the movie first, when they first released it and showed it to the MPAA, it was, they gave it an NC-17. No theaters will show that. So they had to cut out a bunch of parts. But then there were other movies like Schindler's List. Look at that. And not, it's a great movie. But look at all the gore Tremendous. and the nudity and everything that in that movie got well, a rated black R. Black and white does help because you, you doesn't know make it. The, the black and white color, makes it more shocking, though. It can, but it's not gory. Well, yeah, it, it is. is gory, but you know what I mean. You don't see bread all over. It's so much more. It doesn't um, matter. Shocking. It doesn't matter. The black and white makes it more shocking, yeah. and you wonder why. And a lot of people have said it's because there's a big difference between Steven Spielberg making a movie and the people of South Park Joe making Schmo, a movie. Yeah. You know, so I've heard the rate. Kevin Smith has been fucked over by the ratings board many times. Every was, movie that came yeah. out was given an NC-17, and he had to fight to get it down so to an R. Can you get rid of yeah. some of the cum jokes? <laughs> well, Schindler's yeah. List was R, right? That was not PG-13. It was R. Okay. I'm yeah. just saying, why can't a sex comedy get away with an R because it makes a few poop jokes? That's that's an interesting thought. But yeah. Schindler's List and, and like Shawshank Redemption is another one that comes to mind that could have been possibly NC-17 that had a lot of... You know, rape, rape scenes and things, and it's it was an rated R. It was a lot to pass. Yeah, look at movies like Jackass. Fucking people taking yeah. live shits on camera, and it gets away with it. You can show that in a theater. You know, fucking uh, Borat and his big dick on screen <laughs> gets an R, even though it was censored. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's an interesting but, topic. Yeah, I, I think it all did start with Temple of Doom because you know, well, Temple of Doom just gave it the PG-13. Yeah, it was supposed and to be PG, it, right? <laughs> now, right? And nowadays, any movie. Is pretty much PG thirteen. It is kind of a scary movie. Temple it of Doom. It really Dim? is. It is pretty scary. It's dark, but would you classify it as an R rated movie though? You got to think of hmm. the the total the the movie as a whole, despite a couple of scenes. It's it's still a, a you know kicking. You know anybody yeah. can really see it, aside from maybe that one scene. And that's I think what they go by too is how much like Titanic. I think the reason why they got away with it was because a the nudity was very tasteful and b 
it was maybe three <laughs> seconds. Tasteful nudity. I like that. You can have tasteful so nudity. You can have nudity in a movie like if it's tasteful. Leo was fucking her up the ass. <laughs> that would be an Academy worthwhile ending. <laughs> that was nice. I remember that. Wow. That's an interesting topic you brought up, though. Hmm. I used to always wonder that. Remember, we talked about last week on the last podcast, well, Police Academy. The yeah. first one was rated R, and all the sequels were PG. It's so all weird. Right. Well, because they they dropped a lot of the adult humor, right? Yeah, from what yeah, I heard, no nudity. And, but the Expendables yeah. three, I believe, was going to be PG thirteen. Or I heard some of how they added CGI blood or some shit to make it look yeah things like that. It's just come on, people. What's the difference? Well, like all the Friday the Thirteenth movies, the more they made them, the less gory they became because the ratings board was more harsh on those movies. Oh, they were yeah. like, you got to take they all these things out. out. Yeah. yeah Otherwise, part, part you couldn't seven, show them. I think it was part seven that really paid a big yeah. price. Part seven got pretty fucked. Yeah. You know, and that's like the driest movie in the whole series. Well, it might be. I, I hate kill... Oh, I'm so, oh, I hate that though, when they cut away. Jason's about to kill someone. <gasps> I was yeah. just thinking, would it be funny to make a Jason movie? I know we talked about this on another podcast, but I was racking my brain of possibilities the other night about like, you know, how we can kill Glenn or something. <laughs> You are so put nice to that movie. kid. That, no, that kid owes you He'd so be a much. Great victim. You could like make some noises outside. Who is it? Fazes need for speed. Glenn owes you so much for how nice you've been to him I, over I'll the be years. I'd be a fucking victim. I'd be a good. Yeah, victim. you should be a victim. The gay guy that gets hello. <laughs> the machete in his ass <laughs> I'm in the my shower. Computer, like watching porn. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, just kill me. Bash my head in like the fucking computer screen. <laughs> it's like some CGI effect. And then Glenn comes Help in yourself, and like, fucker. yeah, Glenn comes in and like throws the computer at your face. No, well, no, I just, I don't know. Jay, how would you kill someone with Jason if you really had a choice in one scene? To I've shoot, never seen him shove a machete you... up a guy's ass, <laughs> <laughs> or shove the machete and shove a machete in some guy's nice. keyhole. Oh, 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 I mean that though. You gotta be inventive. I don't know how I would do it. <laughs> just bash Glenn's head in the. <laughs> Sit around. We should God sit around. The next podcast. Okay, so I promise you, the next podcast, we're gonna sit around and think about uh-huh. all the ways to kill people. No, um, I, no. I was just saying, if you could film one scene of Jason killing someone, I wonder how I would do it. So it's all about the payoff, you know. Yeah. I'm a machete up the ass. <laughs> one guy got a harpoon in the crotch, right? Wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. And um, in Battle Royale, which I I'm, saw. Which I'm I really love, sure. Man. Ooh, she stabbed him right in the dick. I was like, oh. Yeah, I'm really sure if you thought about it, you could come up with some inventive kills. I mean, every every Jason movie has Back at least one that's and really you good. you something already been done. Right. So, you know. That's the remake, like, took all the popular <laughs> kills and, like. <laughs> you thought of Jason? He's such a prankster. He like nails bodies on the doors and shit. He's actually walking around. You need to make a whole movie about like him just like I mean, nailing really, bodies to the door. He stood her, 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 they'll never know it was I me. Mean, just, I mean, really, he's in the kitchen and shit making coffee. <laughs> this will be this will get her. <laughs> oh my god, it's Laura. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, we should do a Jason movie. You always talk about wanting to shoot something. Let's fucking do it. You know, well, me, Glenn, and um, I don't know whoever else. Joe, me, <laughs> me, Glenn, and Joe. <laughs> yes, I like. Who that. died first? You fucking who died first? <laughs> well, like an, an order. <laughs> what if Glenn was like playing a video game? <laughs> you make noises outside. Hello, <laughs> who is this? Sorry, I'm just I'm away. Have him go outside. And Jason kitty, comes, kitty, kitty, kitty. That'd be sweet. He turns around and Jason's right behind him. Comes yeah. and shoves, you know, shoves a fucking yeah, shoves fucking play, machete up, up his ass. ass. <laughs> oh! Comes out his dick. He's got a machete for a Dude, dick. Dude, that'd be so sick. All right, trauma. <laughs> trauma presents Friday. I've never seen him cut off boobies. Can we talk about the future of our favorite franchises? I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street. Is it dead sure. or what? Is it done? I Nightmare on Elm Street. What's going on? Is well, I. I don't want to see uh, another movie with uh, the guy, you know, another yeah. Freddy, you know. But is it over? I thought they announced a sequel, or I guess not. To the remake? I, <laughs> I just, no, what, nobody wants that. They're, they're, it's like, <laughs> nobody saw the remake. Like, right. the one thing they the remake. Did. It made like $40 million, but yeah. The one thing the remake did good, well, was that it, it brought Freddy back into the minds of both the fans and maybe people who've never seen Freddy before who would go back and maybe have interest in seeing the original movies. But nobody wants to see a sequel to the remake. They want to see Robert England. I would. I would go see it because I'm a fan, but I don't. <laughs> I really don't want to see it that. Over? I was just thinking of that. I'm like, man, this sucks. I, I, I think, think the only done. direction you can really take it at this <laughs> point. really did. <laughs> it might be. I, I think the only way you can really take it at this point is to have more versus movies. 
And that's just not going to happen because people... Yeah. It's just we talked about this so many times in the last podcast. Studios don't release movies when people want them. They release movies yeah. 10 years later. Yeah, that, that is weird. You're it's, right. It's really weird. It's frustrating because, like, you know... I want to fucking There's see money a, to be made and it's just like I want to see a Wizards are just rule movie. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so I bad. Think. I think people would love that movie. Didn't you love that Legend of oh, the Seeker series though? Shut up. Not really. I'm serious. Don't tell me to shut up. Did you not like that? Wasn't that a great series? Crickets it had chirping. Its moments. No, it didn't. I'll, I'll make a, I'll make the top 11. <laughs> top 11 Thanks good the moments. Seeker got uh, got and right like, and fucked it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the cat said well but boy was he useless all I can say is it can be done I, I adapted the Kaden first novel into a screenplay yeah, well, who do you cast as Kalen that's your first problem I really like the girl though that TV <laughs> series I love Jennifer Lawrence she was attractive let's get Jennifer Lawrence you really have a boner for that girl or Scarlett Johansson is Kalen <laughs> that might work if you give her like the, the dark because you need to find that hair. exquisite beauty you know? yeah I don't know who would you have Jennifer yeah. Gardner <laughs> Ah, that's another good one. Seriously, really, Jennifer Garner? I think so. Yeah, because Kalen doesn't She's have like to be like. I mean, what do you? You need a Youngs. I don't know. Some people, uh, you know, age. Uh, ben Affleck is Richard. Oh, jeez. Fuck me. He's already Batman. Does he have to have every like great franchise? No, then they get divorced during production. <laughs> oh, wonderful! Got to cast Kalen again. <laughs> Jennifer Lopez as Kalen. God, I kill this bitch. Halle Berry Man, is Kalen. Man, I Kaylin. need money. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> yeah. You're supposed to love me, bitch. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think Anyways. with, with Kalen, you know, Angelina Jolie might be a good contender for Kalen. Nah. You don't think so? Get, I, think give her need, that I think you need someone unknown. I mean, someone like That's her. what I was going to say. I, yeah, I really would like to see somebody you, relatively unknown. I would be watching that, that movie going, that's Angelina Jolie. That's all I yeah, well, about, you know. It'd be too distracting. You need an unknown. Yeah, but if they beautiful. if they do it right, they can do yeah. it. Never never turn your back on performers because you never know. I always thought if they did Berserk as a real life movie, Halle Berry would make a great Costco. Oh, man, yeah. Yeah. She'd make a good anything. <laughs> She'd be dreams. great on rye, bet, rye bread with mayonnaise. <laughs> Um, so what else was there? Well, yeah, top, the future of Jason? Or? The future of Jason? Uh. Um, I know they have a new sequel coming out. I, I really don't think it'll be good. I don't know. Yeah. It's found footage, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that series is still around, and this will be the 13th film, yeah? Yeah, that'll be interesting. But I just, it's the 13th film. I think they should capitalize on that. And I don't think a found footage movie Corey is Feldman. the way to go. Yeah. I think Corey Gotta Feldman Corey should Feldman. come back. And, you gotta give the fans. You know, the, the, if I were to do it, if if I were, I, I wrote a Friday the Thirteenth screenplay yeah. a while back, Bloodshot. where right, Love where it was it was meant for Corey Feldman to come back and fight Jason. And this is, if it were up to me, this is what I would do: have one Friday the Thirteenth film where Corey Feldman faces off against Jason. Who would play Jason? Ted White from the final chapter, because they already didn't like each other on the set when they were filming it. 20 years ago so that would be great that would be great chemistry right there yeah. they, they've worked together and they don't like each other Ted White still to this day doesn't That's like one Corey of my Feldman favorite scenes though in Jason history then I would do a Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> film with Robert Englund as Freddy and have Heather Langenkamp come back and then I would do another Freddy vs. Jason film that had both Heather Langenkamp Corey Feldman Robert Englund and Kane Hodder as Jason ooh that's how I would do it. I would do a trilogy that way. Resurrect both franchises and then have another versus movie, maybe with Ash. Like a battle royale. Yeah. Triple threat match. Yep. That would never happen because it's something but that Freddy would make would the studios a lot of money. Dude, we've all agreed. Freddy's a fucking pansy. Oh, I don't know, world, man. I don't dude. you need to go back and watch Freddy vs. Jason like again. <laughs> go watch Freddy vs. Jason again, man, because yeah. Jason got fucked up in that movie. No, yeah, they definitely gave They should... they gave us our money's worth. Wasn't I Jason really liked that movie. World, though? Isn't that what happened? Yeah. Jason fought him. Jason was in the Nightmare World, got his ass oh, kicked. Then Freddy got in the real world. And, yeah. But they still put up a, a, a good fight. And I was really amazed, given how strong Jason is. Freddy, you know, should be a fucking pussy in the real world. But he got, you know, putting his claws through Jason's eyes. and That was badass, yeah, man. Fully agree. Beating him with his own arms. I mean, Jason got pretty fucked up in that movie. And it was up until, I mean, it, it's a decent movie. The characters sucked. But at the end, you got your big fight. And it was spectacular. And they need to do more stuff right, like this that. This is the last time we're going to talk about the, the future of Star Wars. All right. I don't like the spinoff movies. What do you think? They're, they're going to do a spinoff movie in between each movie. I'm now. excited that there's going to be new Star Wars movies. Um, I've kind of come to terms with the fact that, that Disney 
um, kind of wants to not only resurrect the series, but just have it go in so many different directions. And I'm trying to get caught up, but I think the TV shows I'm not going to really pay much attention to. Um, but the movies, um, as far as as long as they're all live action, I'm looking forward to it. But let's see where they go. I mean, I'm I'm open to anything at this point. I just I don't I just want a good trilogy, and I just I don't really like the idea of having a spinoff movie. But it depends them. on it depends on how they do them. Like I mean, I don't think a lot of people are interested in a Yoda or an Obi Wan movie. But if they do spinoff movies that in some way connect to the trilogy, that might be pretty cool. Now, so far from what I understand, they're not really doing that. I don't see Harrison Ford continuing to play. Han for the rest of his life. No, but he's getting killed in the next movie. That's what I would think. Yeah, and then, well, the first spinoff movie, I believe, is of Han Solo. Yeah. So he's probably going to die at the end. And then, and then have, like, a prequel movie. movie yeah. Show. What's the point of that, though? I mean, <laughs> is there... That's I don't like I don't the spinoffs know. to me, man. I, I just... I wanted a good trilogy. But, I mean, keep an open you know, mind. I, I would well, say... I'm just saying. It'll be like, interesting, though, to have some standalone yeah. Star Wars films, because yeah. there aren't any... Everything, you know, you've got all these trilogies now. You know, that's great, but it, it'll be interesting to see the spinoff I movies. would have rather have had the spinoffs... After this trilogy's over, because to me the trilogy, I like the idea. You know, I, the one thing I hated about the Star Wars movies was that you had oh to wait God. three years between each film. Oh, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, and and it killed me. It's like it's like a mini series. Mini series, they take place. You know, you get to see what happens the very next the week or the next day. Yeah, waiting so waiting on. three years. I mean, oh my God. So the fact that they're doing these prequel, I mean, these sequels every two years as opposed to every three years, and in between them that you're going to have more Star Wars movies to kind of film those. So it's really like a, I like it's like a five film thing, really, not three. Well, it depends because really, they're going to. It's like a five film, uh, right? Then. But they're going to probably go beyond the trilogy too. That's a lot of Star Wars in the next five years. Five, yeah. five movies. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. You know, I, I am now. I guess and, I'm just long, and uh, from what I've seen of the photos on set, all I can say is so far I've seen a lot of uh, miniatures and a lot of models. Oh yeah, yeah, we've seen. You pictures. know, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it now. I'm I'm not oh, saying yeah, I'm not saying well. hey, I guarantee it'll be a great Dude, movie. You're a Star Wars fan, you can't help but be a little excited. This oh yeah, is an amazing time for us. Yeah, I think what it was new. was. I'm only ex- I'm only really excited when the movies start coming out. Like what got me into Star trailer. Wars. I want to see a trailer. Yeah, well, that'll come out next year sometime. I Trailers. Mean, this this really... movie is coming. They they, start, they just you know. started production yeah. last like last month, mm-hmm. and the movie's coming out a little over a year from now. I don't know if yeah. I like the leaked photos. That's kind of it. Kind of does. I don't know. It's kind of cool in a way, but also you kind of do feel like you're kind of ruining your own experience. Well, you know. you're a fan, though. You can't help that. You're yeah. going to know a little bit by the time the movie I comes out. I like his out. little joke, though. Please stop insisting the Millennium Falcon's going to be in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and he left it right on top of the... <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> he's such a fan, too. And it's, it's just good to see. I mean, I bet he's yeah. a very nerd in all of us about Star Wars. Yeah, he well, probably... he's directing it. I mean, I would think so. Well, you know so. what I mean, though. He's yeah. fucking going up. I really it. think J.J. Abrams is a great choice, you know? and oh, uh, definitely. All I can say is, you know, I, I him, love yeah. I love all the movies. I don't think there will ever be a truly like bad Star Wars movie. I do think that there there is with Disney now in command, there might be an oversaturation. What what I hope doesn't happen and it probably will. They're turning the Star Wars franchise into like the Avengers where you have a bunch of films and then you've got your major That's what I don't films, like and, about it. you know. And I don't have a problem with that. It's just like with what Marvel is doing, that's all they care about. Like, The Avengers was a very successful movie. It was very fun to watch at the time. But I don't think it'll stand the test of time. I just, I just don't see what's so wrong with just a trilogy right now. That's, I mean, I don't know. I Marketability. Guess I'm the minority, man. I just, I don't like these Marketab- spin-off movies in between. There's a lot of people that probably feel the same way. I would rather these spin-offs come after the trilogy. You know, that'd be cool then. I but mean, like I said, I, I think it'll be cool to see a new movie every year. I like that There's idea. a lot of creative things going on. But you've got that's the thing though you've got a lot of directors though it's not like one person this is might be the only one he does I don't know he, he might do two or three I don't know we'll see how it how it goes all I care about is episode seven episode eight episode nine yeah. you know, that's freaking nine hours of film they got towards all the Star Wars they but at do. the same time they these be enough. these the one thing that I'm kind of questioning what Disney is doing is they're kind of they they made a very brash announcement that everything aside from the movies is non-canon, meaning that the only things that really count in the actual universe are the movies and the shows and all that stuff. Yeah. That's fine. You're going to piss off a lot of fans, though, because a lot of fans have read the books and they know what like Luke's kids are named and who he's married to and all this stuff. So if you're going to debunk that, that's great. But yeah, these are these so. are just sequels. I don't really think they're going to tie in very much the to material is the, the past. Six movies. <laughs> yeah. 
That's all it needs to be. You don't need to go read books and get names right. Fuck all that. Just base what you want to see, the kind of story you want to see in the future. Yeah, it'll be. I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm. I, yeah, I, that's I all just, I can say I is, just, as I see more, you know, and don't. I mean, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be a Han Solo and a Boba Fett spinoff. I think that's what I've read. That the two spinoff movies. Yeah. Because there will be two spinoff movies in total with the trilogy. You would yeah. imagine. But I let's don't know. just see how good they are. I, I think too, people have such a bad taste for the prequels that they're kind of tired of going back in time. They want movies that are going forward in time. I don't that, think I'd even see a Boba Fett movie. But you know, it's, you know what it is though is that if you go to Episode Eight, you, there'll be things in the spinoff movie that you're going to need to know. That'll it'll make people want to see it because yeah, you, yeah. And you know, I don't know. Even even if they don't have much to do with the trilogy, I, I yeah. I'm kind of excited. I mean, I just I just want them to be good. I just though. want this trilogy to be good. I the trilogy to me, it's all about the trilogy. I don't care about a Yobi one movie. A Yo- I want a good trilogy. That's you wouldn't go, but you were not going to go. So you're not going to go, go see the spinoff. Movies. No, I will. I'm just. I mean, but I you know I can't have my way. It's only one guy's opinion. But I just. I want them to concentrate on the trilogy. First and foremost. But they. But that, that's the thing too, though. It's yeah. not. I mean, they have a lot of people working on both ends. You, you've got a, a team of people working on the trilogy. You've got another team of people working on the the spinoff movies. Another team of people right. working. Yeah. There's a lot of different groups doing it. There's a lot going so on. So it's not like yeah. it's one man. Which some might argue is the problem with the prequels. It was just George Lucas doing the whole trilogy. Sure, it's a lot now of you've work. got many yeah. people doing it. You know, maybe he did and, just overwork himself. You know, yeah, I don't think know? he did. But uh, so he didn't. I, I'm I'm <laughs> looking forward to Star Wars, and it's great that it has a future because in 2005, after Revenge of the Sith, Star Wars is pretty much dead. You had the Clone Wars, yeah. and then there was going to be like a live action TV series. And uh, I don't know what's happening to that, but now Star Wars is back. I like that pig flame. monster, huh? You see the picture of that pig monster? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm excited. That looks badass. You know, and we'll they're see. building the Millennium Falcon. I can't believe it. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. Not the Millennium Falcon. Sweet nostalgia. Uh, what did, the, Maltese, the Maltese Falcon. Shut I up. saw the Maltese Falcon. Oh, yeah, you're a fan. It's a movie. Yeah, I know. I got them mixed. <laughs> they're building the Maltese Falcon. Yeah. Carrie Fisher lost weight. Oh boy. <laughs> I love seeing that picture of the three of them together. By the way, that was very yeah. Nice to see. Cannot wait. Yeah, check out my Facebook, by the way, Lenny Sherman Facebook org or something like that. But there's a picture of Chewbacca kind of getting his feel on with Leia. Yeah, so check that out. Shall we move into this? Yeah, dude, I want to hear. What what are we moving into? I'm a big film guy, and I had to rack my brain for my 25 favorite movies. Not movies I think are great. Well, yeah, it's just movies. They better be great, dude. This is your top Uh, 25. They got to be great. They're your top 25. Well, there's all kinds. There's there's comedies. I tried to. You know, a lot of it had to do with my favorite directors. It would be hard not to. Now, have how are we doing this? Are you going to talk anything? about each one? Or are you well, just going to go right through them? There's not like a, any set list, but I think I have it all here. One of, you, no Indiana Jones. Okay, well, well, doesn't yeah, have I, to. Up there. Doesn't have to. So many honorable mentions. Uh, I got what is this? Well, okay, probably we'll start from number twenty-five yeah, and go down. No but 25. talk about a few of them. Oh, okay. I got um, Empire Strikes Back. Uh, that's 25. obvious. I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Forrest Gump made it. All right. I love Forrest Gump. I think we've talked about that enough. Actually, oh, yeah. I include it because it's one of my favorite comedies is Caddyshack. I actually, I would actually take Caddyshack. Cool. Cracks me up. Can't help it. Uh, Clerks. Clerks <laughs> is good. Not bad. Kevin Smith, big breakthrough. I'll let it pass. Thank you. <laughs> Titanic, actually. I actually say Titanic's one of my favorite 25 movies just because I think it's James Cameron's masterpiece. And I just, there was nothing like that film when, you know, I remember seeing that movie three times and it marked me so much in my, yeah. well, no, in the theater, I mean. I can, it's a great. It's almost I can a see that. Everybody's cast perfectly. Yeah, it captures the emotion of a real life tragedy. I think the only thing that's gotten diminished yeah. over the years with that is the love story. But I mean, you it know, still the, rings nicely. The, I think. Yeah, the the one kind of the one note love story that goes back to Shakespeare and probably before that. So I'll let that pass. It is a very well made movie. I, I mean, really yeah, think that's just, of all wow. of Cameron's work, that's his best. All one. Right. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah um, uh, let's see here. I don't believe this one. Okay, I'm going to skip that one. Goodfellas made it. Got to go with Goodfellas. What was one you're going to skip? Well, I'm just looking through. I'm making sure I get them all right. I got my top ten definitive, but these are just okay. the other ones that made the list. Well, what was one you're going to skip? Well, okay, I got uh, Return of the King. Okay. You know, that was on mine. Isn't that weird that like five years ago I was like, fuck Lord of the Rings. Yeah, you were. Frodo's a fag. And you're like, no, yeah. no, no. It's it's Bilbo that's a fag. <laughs> 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 no, no, yeah. you got it all wrong. <laughs> he sucked his dick. Oh, <laughs> this Ooh, makes more sense now. Sleeping. I tingled his balls. Must have been when he was wearing that green uniform. You pay five bucks to get your balls like two. <laughs> uh, I'm okay. A couple of weird ones here. Actually, I got the Dark Knight. Okay, I love the Dark Knight. I can't Nothing wrong it. with that. Goodfellas made it. You like yep. Goodfellas? Love Goodfellas. Gotta go with my favorite Ghostbusters. That's yep. on there too. That makes sense. Can't help it. 
Can't help it. This is a weird one. It's called City Lights by Charlie Chaplin. I've seen that. Yeah. I like silent film a lot. And wow, he was, I'm he kind was of great. surprised. No, well, he was really good at that. He you was would take City Lights over a walk beside Eden yeah, seriously? Yeah, right. Well, yeah, and you did a silent. But I, I watch the movie almost every year. I love it. It's just such yeah, a cool Yeah, because story. I'm on the same page as Charlie Chaplin. Well, I love when he sees the, the girl that he used to know and they hold hands. She goes, is it you? She recognized him just by the touch of his hand. I oh, think. she was blind in that movie, right? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I it's love, you, right? I love you can see because he paid for her surgery. Right. He paid her the money. I love Love that see. movie. She goes, I can see. And, oh uh, yeah, that's I, a I great ending. My birthday. That's a great ending. I love that ending. Go oh, ahead. Right. And then the guy gets all drunk and forgets about him. <laughs> I don't know what he's drunk. He's like, oh, hey, my good friend. Yeah, <laughs> but, I think I cried at the end of that movie. That was a uh, powerful movie. It's, yeah. it's a classic. He was he was a giant dude in, in film. He really was. Yeah. Uh, okay, I got my favorite horror movie. Obviously, made the list. Nightmare on Elm Street. Cool. Got to have Freddy. Yeah. I got Sons of the Lambs. Uh, okay. I think that's a perfect horror movie. That's, that's yeah, that's a good one. Such a good movie, dude. I mean, watching it again, Shawshank Redemption's on there. Of course, we're getting to my top ten. RoboCop. There we go. RoboCop's in my top twenty-five. I can't believe it. Why? I don't know. Why did he not win? He should have won an Oscar, dude. Clarence Bodiger for like supporting actor. Can you imagine that? Bitches acceptance? lead. Can you imagine that acceptance speech? <laughs> Keep the gum. <laughs> I want my fucking phone call. <laughs> he should have. I always thought that was like a, a worthy performance. Okay, is that it? What do you think so far? That's not bad. That's a good list. That's pretty I mean, good. You probably borrowed Can't twenty, you know, eighty percent of that from my list. But uh, go ahead. Are you at your top ten top now? Top ten, yeah, I guess. All right, drum I'll roll. Here we go. Uh, oh, geez, this is disappointing. <laughs> it's your I, it's I, your list, have, man. Yeah, Wizard of Oz, me, my top ten because it's okay. like my favorite fantasy. I just I think it's just I don't know. Yeah. Psycho made it from Hitchcock, black and white. Love it, can't help it. No surprise there. Not not really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you should be like the next H. B. Citizen Kane. Just kidding. Casablanca made my top ten. Like that one a lot. That's an old school Humphrey okay. Bogart. We all know about it. Star Wars obviously is in the top ten. And then Raging Bullshit, Raging Bull. Ha! That made top ten somehow. All right. Martin Scorsese couldn't help it. And then Scorsese. Scorsese, bitch. <laughs> Fuck you. And I got Godfather, Vertigo by Hitchcock. And then Number one? What's number there's one? There's three left. Oh, okay. Number oh, okay. Two. I got I got Pulp Fiction. Okay. Just because I thought it was the most if Schindler's List is the best movie of the nineties, then Pulp Fiction is the most influential movie of the nineties, I think. I really do. I really felt well that said. was well as said. good as it can be. And Schindler's List was the other one. Schindler's List top ten easily. And, uh, yeah, Spielberg is the only director. With, oh, actually, Hitchcock did, too, but Jaws, obviously. Number one? Yes. Well, whatever. Yeah, I just... Any one of those you want to... No, there's nothing wrong with that list. Any, anything? <sighs> any one movie? Off my chest. Any one movie you want to talk about specifically? Uh, we've watched about all these movies. We've talked about all these movies. Okay. <laughs> oh, Blade Runner's on there. Oh, I already skipped that. Yeah, whatever. You know, fuck it. There's no definitive <laughs> list. <laughs> But if, I mean, my my top twenty five list though had some obs- not obscure ones, but right. s- but movies that you would not generally more close associate yeah, with the twenty with you know top twenty five <laughs> list. Not really social. Like Toxic Avenger and Heavy you Metal. Might it yeah. I'm thinking about going back and updating it. Your window might overcome. I don't know. I would definitely <laughs> say Berserk would be on there somewhere. Oh, okay. I love Berserk. Yeah. Can we watch like the second part tonight before we go to bed? We should. Let's watch part I don't two. Know. It's one thirty. So you got one more hour. Should have done that earlier. Oh, okay. So we went through the list. That was my list. Not that it means much. Cool. Right, yeah, whatever. that's a good list. Took a while. Yeah, it took a while to figure it out. Yeah, it's hard to come up with 25, but the so ones, you know, like, I yeah. try to think about the ones that I grew up with, the ones that influenced sure. me to be a filmmaker. You know, the reason why I wanted to pursue film was certain movies. And yeah. now I just, like, Berserk didn't really inspire me to be a filmmaker as much as it's just a fucking great story and great animation and, you know... But like movies like Toxic Avenger, that was one of the first movies where I was like, I would love to do this because it's yeah. such a hokey movie, but it's like so cheaply done. It's like I can do this and and still make it good and entertaining and you know. So what are you gonna shoot this year? I was thinking today um, after watching those Snicks flicks um, <laughs> of doing like a short uh, found footage f- film. That's what I was thinking about doing it. And Found footage, yeah. Yeah, it, th- that would be the easiest one to do because the, the biggest obstacle for me as a filmmaker is finding actors. Um, every movie that I've done, aside from Loose Change, has me in it. And uh, I figure, well, why the hell not? I mean, I, I really should be out doing this more, even if they're not good films, because I, I really... Well, Detroit Vice didn't have you either. Well, that's not really a film, though. I, I don't I count that is. as a film. I do. Uh, fine, you can have Detroit Vice. I love Detroit Vice. Anyways, Glenn Shining moment. <laughs> Just can so you please change that back though to your mama. 
I maybe. All right, thank you. It was ten times funnier in the movie. director's cut. Um, you were saying. it's just such an offensive movie. That's all. It's what? not something I really like to show many people because it's offensive. Yeah, it's Nigger offensive. Mexican's kind of a little too far. Well, yeah, that's I mean, what he's I'm a saying. white Jewish guy. No, I know that, he but not everybody. My pants off is offensive. Enough. <laughs> That's offensive enough. That's funny, um, but no, it, like the movies that I I've done, like Attack of the B movies and Walk Beside Eden, like to me, like I watch those and it's like I've grown a lot as a filmmaker, and to me, those are top quality short films. Like to me, I people who've seen them. I've gotten different reviews, but basically yeah, people are like, you're really good at this. Well, that's like, good. You know, pe- pe- the people who generally get stuff out of it are the ones who aren't really into movies. They just, they see them and they're like, oh, that's really cool. Uh, the people who criticize it are these snobby filmmakers who think that because they have a $50,000 camera, they know how to be a filmmaker. Um, it's not true, by the way. But, uh, <laughs> no, I really should be out with my camera shooting more stuff yeah. just on my like own. Like in American Beauty, he's just like... You ever seen American Beauty? No. You ever seen American Beauty? Oh, mm-hmm. okay, never mind. You wouldn't have gotten that. But uh, no, I, I really want to go out this summer and shoot a couple of things. I want to maybe try to shoot three short films this summer. It's a goal. Um, and if I do like found fo- like a found footage trilogy that follows one story, hmm, that'd, that'd be, be kind of cool to do. I think a Jason movie. I, I don't think wanna... you can do it right here. No, I don't want to do anything existing. Me, Joe, and Glenn. But watching that, watching James Rolfe's movies today, like as cheesy as they were, it's so inspiring right. because he literally had the same movie camera I did when I was in high school. It, no viewfinder, an old eight millimeter. It had a black and white viewfinder that you looked into, like in the eyepiece. Yeah. There was no LCD screen, so you couldn't see what you were getting. I didn't have a tripod. I used books just His like he did. These were kind of trippy, weren't they? Weren't some kind of weird? Didn't he yeah, like these these film? were very trippy. Yeah, yeah, very. And these were like home movies he did, but he did six of them over the course of like five years. Yeah, and they were just inspiring. And they, were, I was actually entertained by a lot of them too. He had a lot of like Killer Instinct music, like video game music. Mm-hmm. There was like the Donkey Kong Country soundtrack was playing while oh, God, he was being just... chased by snakes. <laughs> it was they were fun, and and that. I should be out doing these little experimental you used to films. You all the time, man. You were always filming stuff. I know, you but know? you know, you're over here once a year, and I never see Dan, Dan anymore. Wow. So no, Dan's over here once a year. Okay, I'm here more once a year. Dan's never been here. That's what I mean. Dan once doesn't a give a fuck. <laughs> his, but, uh, his ratio is decreasing. I like your idea about Joe, though. Joe, but, you know, we should have Joe come over and do some of these movies. But no, I, I want to do. Oh, he'd be a good victim. Yeah. Well, I'm still, I, I like the Jason idea. I don't care how bad they. I just want to. I want to shoot something. I'd so, be Jason, can I kill you? <sighs> Whatever. I would love. <laughs> Yeah, right. And Glenn can have like a funny punchline. Oh, it's always you kill me, and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then Glenn comes and like farts in my face. <laughs> oh, oh, my brother's dead. Glenn thinks you like stashed money in the house somewhere. He's looking around for it. And shit. That'd be interesting. <laughs> Begging on the walls, trying to. Yeah. <laughs> I but I'd know. like to do, and I have two cameras, so that'd be cool. Like you have a camera, I've got a camera. We just go around shooting random stuff. Like you could shoot me with the camera, I could film you with the Isn't camera. Isn't it weird going around. being on camera though? Don't you find that weird? A lot Not, of people are very uncomfortable with that. About being on camera? Yeah. Um, Haven't it you depends. A lot of people have. A problem I don't. With that? I really don't mind watching. Well, it depends. Like I have a small cameo in the Melvin Wall story, and uh, I I didn't like myself in that movie because I've gained a few pounds over the last five years. But you looked a little portly. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Fuck you. No, hey, it's so my hey. But uh, you don't got to say it. It's not how well, you... Well, no, you said you pounds on the pounds. It's so. not that you said it. It's how you said it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Luke. Anyway. Anyways, yeah, um, you didn't, no, like, I, you I didn't don't, see yourself. No, I don't have a problem with me in movies. Walk Beside Eden, I, I didn't mind, but I'm not an actor. That's not my... I'm, I'm a director. I'm a writer. Yeah. You know, so acting to me doesn't come as naturally. And even directing, I haven't done it a lot. So I'd like more practice moving the camera. I did a wedding, this past wedding, right. using my new camera. I've got the Canon T3i. It's a DSLR. And these cameras, if you don't know, they're not really made for movie shooting. They're made for photography. But a lot of filmmakers use them because of the lenses and things. Yeah. So they come out pretty nicely. But I was kind of disappointed the quality was fine, but it was very shaky. So I'd like to get to know the camera a little more, and and doing found footage is fine because you expect shaky camera work a little found bit. Found footage, yeah. Nah, I don't know if I like found footage. Well, they're easy to I mean, shoot. Blair though. Witch Project and yeah, Diary but of the Dead Paranormal Activity I think worked out great. That's the only one I can think of. Cloverfield I thought worked out great. Yeah, Boulder. I mean, Dash. you know, they're not for everybody. But when you're think when when you're a low budget filmmaker, and you know, that'd be great for me if you don't have actors. Found, found footage is the way to go. Well, I'm gonna go write the script. I'm thinking a Friday Thirteenth movie in this house. 
No, no I don't want to do Friday. You we do can, Friday we can the smoke 13th. Fake weed and shit. <laughs> you can smoke real weed, no, no, and I'll no. smoke fake. We'll get, like water and beer bottles, make it look like we're drinking. I'll film it, man. I'll get a fuck. You, will you be my victim? Sure. <laughs> do you want to pay for all the? It's hard effects. to do. Yeah, isn't it hard to do? Oh no, no blood. But the, <laughs> then how can it be a Jason <laughs> Just movie? Make it look like it. the sequel to the New Blood. I Great. should put his head in that cabinet. And isn't it funny how like the the se- <laughs> the name of part seven was the New Blood and there is no blood no, in the that's movie? That's how to kill him right there. You open the cupboard and then back, put his head in the room. <laughs> you put it in this up. <laughs> All right, way to go, Lloyd Kaufman. <laughs> and joking like me getting food in the fridge and Glenn's body's in. Ah! <laughs> Matt, Glenn's dead! And you're like, fuck you! Yeah. Where's the corkscrew? <laughs> Where's your protein shake, you fat fuck? <laughs> I just put his body under the table. I like get dinner and shit. Sit down. Oh my god! I'm sorry. That'd be great. That'd be a great way to kill someone. Put their head in there. And just... Anyways, that sounds fun. It's fun to think of that kind of shit, man. Yeah. We should sometime. But I, yeah, that's what I want. Who fucking farted? Dude? I'll buy Jesus the camera. <laughs> no, I've got the camera. I know you do. That'd you be just gotta cool. be careful. I'll, I told you, I'll write the script. I'll write Joe's dialogue. He probably couldn't come up with anything by himself, so I'll give uh, him the words. All right, Joe, here's where you shit. <laughs> just scream like a little yeah, bitch right yeah, here. Scream like a little bitch because a blade's going up your ass. What? Let's rehearse right here. He's going to kill you. What are we at here? Are we about done with this podcast? One hour is good, I think. Uh, do you remember when we did Attack of the Bee movies? We were rehearsing in the basement and like, I had that giant ass rusty bow saw. And I was making when you I was, guys like, fight slicing with it. Yeah. Oh, God, with that was the, terrible. With, like the real knife. Like, Whoa, dude, dude, slow down. Yeah. I was way too hyper. Yeah, I mean, I if you were to do it seriously and use the makeup that I was using, you'd be miserable. Yeah, I'm glad that, I didn't that do sucks. It, yeah, yeah. I gotta admit, directing so. and, and acting as Jason at the same time. Sucks. Well, maybe Lucas did kind of overdo himself. You know, maybe he did wrote too much, and it's just, that is a. Real do I gotta go over this again, dude? No, I'm just saying. I'm trying to get I the think, prequels are good movies. Hey, I didn't say they weren't. I'm just saying. I think the poor guy overdid himself. That sucks. It's a lot of a lot of work for one guy to do. Yeah, and if he had a few hookups, and so fucking be it. Fuck all that. Who gives a fuck? That's a hardworking man right there. Fuck you, fucking people. Yeah, the Part prequels the were shit. good. They're really They're amazing. Good. You don't think so? I, I you're I just do. saying that because I'm here and you're tired of one third of them. Is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, eleven good points about the prequels. Oh boy, and do the math. You're like every fifty that's... minutes. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh man! Well, I, 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 you know what? Watch him. I would love. I'm going to put a curse this. on you right now. I hope you don't enjoy let's, any of the sequels let's, let's, at all. Oh god! What if it sucks? Oh, it's there a remake of Star Trek. <laughs> I like the crossovers too. Dude. Chris Pine is Luke Can Skywalker. We crossover movies that would be so cool. Yeah, Wink know. and Dumbledore in a relationship. <laughs> I'm married to Dumbledore. Who and Dumbledore? <laughs> Link. Link. <laughs> the fuck is wrong? Why would Link? I'm Zelda and Link. She Why tries would to, like, Link kiss him? He's like, no. <laughs> Dumbledore I'm married, is dead. I'm married to Dumbledore. <laughs> it's like a prequel to Goblet of Fire. <laughs> Some shit. What movies would you combine? They always say Battletoads and Turtles. It'd be kind of funny. Shredder's like, fuck. <laughs> oh, no, there's more. Uh, Braveheart and Batman. <laughs> See? You can I'd do like anything. X Men and Shredder's list. <laughs> That's not far Jewish fetched because <laughs> have you seen the first X Men movie? The very beginning of the movie, Magneto was the survivor of the Holocaust, really? so well, that wouldn't be yeah, that'd be. There's cool. your segue. You don't even need a reason. Indiana Jones and Jurassic Park. There we go, dude. That'd be kind of cool. He has to find like some golden dinosaur turd, <laughs> <laughs> and then you give a T Rex a blaster. Oh, the T Rex shot first. He has to take that blonde from Temple of Doom with him this time. Indy, no. There's two <laughs> Come on, short round. Indy! Oh, Indy! Shut up! <laughs> I won't get you Dairy Queen on the way home. Oh, shit, it's a fucking raptor. That'd be kind of a cool crossover. How about crossovers? What do you think? I don't know. Ghostbusters um, and Alien. <laughs> Mexican, Mexican Fag Boys and Heat and Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh, God. Was that yours? <laughs> Hello, all. Hello, <laughs> I am Ben Cuero De Niro Sr. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Eat my delicious beanie weenie burrito. Beanie weenie. 
<laughs> you cracker, you. <laughs> Gremlins and Detroit Vice. That'd be kind of cool. We'd be like all drunk like the guys. Remember the cops and gremlins? Would- Gizmo! Matt's got his... <laughs> what the hell's going on here? <laughs> deagle, 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 deagle. Gizmo, jerk off. How do you do it better? Gizmo! Jerk off. Yeah. Bad Gizmo, no! <laughs> no. Like knock him out. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot him, with a, off. shoot him with a tranquilizer. You son of a bitch. Term- Terminator and Gremlins. There we go. What? <laughs> Terminator and Gremlins. I'll be back, fucker. Use your motorcycle, your clothes, and your little green friends. <laughs> Put all your little green friends in the meat grinder. In the meat grinder. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's a, so you cooked up a story and threw the six of us into the meat grinder. <laughs> predator <laughs> predator and aliens oh <laughs> fuck all right <laughs> shit they already did that they fucked it up star wars and goonies there you go star wars and aliens oh not bad not bad <laughs> luke skywalker would run like a bitch <laughs> oh that. no they're bleeding oh, acid he's after me yeah. batman forever and aliens <laughs> oh no they're bleeding <laughs> boiling acid Arr! face face yeah. <laughs> With Gremlin thrown in for good match. <laughs> intruder alert! Intruder alert! Shut up! Okay, we're getting loud in here. Bound to wake up your daughter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what other crossovers? Come on, there's plenty. Ninja Turtles and Forrest Gump. I, I also wanted to say sorry to Michael J. Fox for my comments in the last podcast. Yeah, dude. The, the you owe him an apology and a blowjob <laughs> right now. <laughs> you were like, dude. You were like so aghast with me, bro. You were like, seriously, guy? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because you're offending our hardcore audience. You know, well, only they just celebrities. Get Christopher Listen. Lloyd act like him, and they'd be all right. <laughs> one point by one gigawatts. Wow, that's gonna sound good. It'd make a lot of money. One point twenty one yeah, gigawatts. Be awesome to see Doc Brown back in action. I miss that shit, man. Uh, that's what the Blu-rays are for. <laughs> no, like a new one. <laughs> and the racist commentary right. about Michael J. Fox. Yeah. He's like on his deathbed, Marty. <laughs> Grab the DeLorean. Hey, is that a crumbling over there? Hey. Put him in the fucking DeLorean. Take me back in time when I was young. Bill and uh, Ted and RoboCop. I don't know. There's, I don't know. I would like to see more horror crossovers, though. Throw Lando in the world of Starship Troopers. <laughs> Hello? What are, oh, shit, yes. giant bugs! Hey, we're a little higher, a little higher! Oh, it's good, I can see you now. <laughs> anyway... Anything else? Come on, come on with one. Groundhog here. Day and <laughs> Ghostbusters. I thought Ghostbusters and Aliens. <laughs> there we go. They have a Superman. I'm looking at the trap, right? <laughs> they have a Superman versus Aliens. Oh yeah, you can believe that? Yeah. Are they gonna make uh, Ghostbusters three? I thought they are. Uh, half the I don't cast know. Is dead? No, they're not. Hell, Dream. I'm sorry. I don't know. Rest in peace. I don't think they should. Why not? Because I think at this point, anything you do with Ghostbusters three, you're just gonna ruin the legacy. Don't worry, you can come back as like a ghost. That's what I heard was supposed to happen, but I, I just people don't want to see that. If you're going to do Ghostbusters three, you need all four of them, and obviously, you know, may may he rest in peace. But uh, you, you just, I was uh, Harold Ramis. He wrote it, didn't he? Or no, it was Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, but you just can't do Ghostbusters without the original cast. Who wrote Ghostbusters? I think it was Dan Aykroyd, wasn't it, and someone else? I think Harold Ramis, both of them did. Oh, okay, I think, might I have been the two of them, yeah. But uh, yeah, at this point. They, it's one of those things they waited too long. People who wanted the third movie wanted it 10 years ago. It's passed. Now nobody even thinks it's going to come out anymore. And if you do bring it out, Jack Black is, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know. That's not what people you know, want. It would be kind of weird as Reservoir Dogs and um, From Dust Till Dawn. Harvey Keitel would be looking at each other. What the fuck? <laughs> two Quentin Tarantinos, you'd have two Harvey Keitels. Wait, what, what be kind of saying? Reservoir Dogs and From Dust Till Dawn. Oh. Uh, that'd be interesting. <laughs> Do I really would have liked to see uh, a movie with the Vega Brothers. Well, yeah, that, that would have been, been cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, I thought they were supposed to do one well, like one's that. One's dead now, so he really can't do it. He was killed by Bruce Willis in the bathtub. Well, did, no, but you could do oh, it like a prequel. A, yeah, you win your prequels. <laughs> if it's I'm done right, a sequel, which is actually a prequel if it's, to if Empire it's, Strikes Back. <laughs> if it's done, <laughs> Shadows of the Empire. Yeah, there you go. I know you were, you were saying that. What else would be good? I want to see a Super Mario movie. 
<laughs> the sequel to get the cat. Well, he died, unfortunately. No, there was... Um, Bob Hoskins. I forgot about that. Yeah, that does suck. Um, <laughs> they have an anime Mario movie from the 80s. It was yeah. really good. Yeah. Well, they were supposed to remember she came in with a big gun. Let's go. Well, because they yeah. thought it was going to be a fucking big hit. <laughs> it was. Fucking dicks. It's a cult classic. Yeah, no. I'm sure it is. All right, so anything else? It's a clit classic. Are we... <laughs> I enjoy doing this. Are we over an hour? Uh, we're we? getting yeah, we're over an hour. But uh, okay. I don't know. I, I thought there was more to talk about. I enjoyed your top twenty-five. Okay. I wish you would have elaborated more on those. Oh, well, we have talked to. about those movies quite a bit. Oh, I got a little piece of paper. I know, but all these movies we really have talked about. Both I you mean, and me need. To, well, I've done a top ten video games. You should. We should both do like a top twenty-five. Me and you collaborate yeah. on a top twenty-five best video games. Next podcast, wow. top twenty-five video games we'll and uh, inventive Friday the Thirteenth kills that we made up. <laughs> I like that. Okay. We should do that. That'd be a good topic like for the next podcast. Bad, you know? Yeah, and I'll write the script to our Friday the Thirteenth movie. It's gonna be like a five-minute short. I'm just gonna. All right, you write it. We'll do it. I'm looking around your house trying to think of ways to kill motherfuckers in here. <laughs> but that's what Robert Rodriguez was saying in his book. Like, look at your surroundings right. and make a movie based on that. That's so yeah, this with. summer I really want to do some some movies, right. found footage or otherwise. But yeah, I want to get something in the can. So that's my plan, Man. Stan. And uh, naked men. All right, Lenny. That's that's our. Right, this is up our time podcast. to close. Put this shit on the internet, would you please? Quick, so I can listen to it. Sure. I want to hear it. Well, I've, got I can hear of... talk again. <laughs> I've got a lot of editing to do now. We've got two different microphones going, so. Yeah, well, I appreciate the hard work. It's better than being two inches away from your face. Yeah, well, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you and the X-wing you flew in on, you All bastard. Right. All right, guys, we're take we're it we're easy. Watch two more movies. Yeah, fuck. Uh, very short movies. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, uh, this was episode seventeen of Schmuckcast. To walk beside you. All right. Yeah, not given bad. You, given you weren't there, sure, it'll be very appropriate. Oh, I mean, well, come on. I'm sorry. What was All my right. excuse? Did I have an excuse? What no. did I say? Did uh, oh, I that you hate doing movies with me, uh, and I'm a sick bastard. I made up for it with loose change. Yeah, you did. That was like my way of saying, "Hey, I got yeah, you back." And you were the star of that, so whatever. I guess. Fuck you. I want to change dialogue. Can we go back and like change some of it? Overdub you like fucking Pee Wee. Overdub, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Big Adventure. I, 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 I mean, like goddamn quarters. Oh no, the line. quarter is rolling away slowly. Better. I could have said something better. Well, then blame the writer. I could have been a contender, Lenny. <laughs> yeah, could've I'm been sure somebody. you could have been. Now we could do bum. a sequel. A sequel where you go back in time and Shut redo up. Loose Change. Yeah, I don't have a spinoff movie about how I met Doctor. <laughs> and then, a and then Gizmo comes a in. Movie. Gizmo, stop jerking off on me. Bye, Billy boy. This time for real. <laughs> Gizmo, no! Shotgun in his mouth. Gizmo, kill him. Don't want to live. Phoebe Cates comes out. Oh, Billy, I suddenly want to have sex with you. We need On to top of Gizmo's corpse. Phoebe Cates taking off her top. You're going to have to check that out. All right, that's my next movie for you. Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Mark it down. Love All right. you I've whatever. actually seen the scene of her taking off her top many times. American Graffiti. You want to show it to me again? Yeah, American is Graffiti American is next. Graffiti next. I would love yep. to. It's on the AFI Top 100, and that's actually a movie of theirs yeah. I've not seen yet. So anyway, I enjoyed this podcast. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Next well, week we'll talk about Ernest movies. This is <laughs> again, we'll talk about Ernest rides again. Ernest goes to school, and Ernest saves fucking Where should you go next? Hanukkah. A better movie. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good night, guys. Night, guys. Schmuckcast. Or no, it's a dickcast still. I don't know. Welcome, welcome to dickcast. Matt eats a dick. Yeah. Lick my balls. The end. Lick my balls, too. I'm getting fucked in my ass.